Welcome back. On Capitol Hill yesterday, the House voted to open debate on four funding bills after facing two failures last week. However, those moves will likely do little to solve the problem of government funding. The legislation backtracks on a top-line spending deal brokered by President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy earlier this year. As the House works to pass those separate bills, McCarthy is still vowing to bring a stopgap funding bill to the floor by Friday, despite several Republican members saying they'd vote against it. McCarthy, of course, can only afford to lose a handful of votes with the GOP's small majority. In the meantime, the Speaker is placing blame on why the House can't get a funding bill passed. And he's trying to suggest that it's President Biden's fault. All the president has to do is say, you know what? As one of my fundamental jobs as the president of the United States is to secure a border. So that's the that border, border is not secure. Secure that border and we'll be able to keep it all open so, and keep it all working. If we, are you willing to shut down the government if you do not get border security a deal let's that you are having? Let's be very clear. It would not be on us. Our friend Michael Schnell with a question there. A neat trick trying to blame the president for the messiness in the House. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jake Auchincloss of the great state of Massachusetts. He's a member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, as well as the Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and China. So, Congressman, great to see you this morning. Um, let's talk about what's happening in the House. As, you, as we noted, a little progress yesterday, only a little um, but it's the House certainly moving on a separate track than the Senate. Give us your assessment right now. Where do things stand? A government shutdown seems inevitable, and that's because Speaker McCarthy is making a choice. He is making a choice to cave to his hard right and put his own tenuous hold on political power ahead of the needs of the country. In the spring, President Biden came to the table and negotiated a good faith agreement with Speaker McCarthy on how to fund the government for the next year while cutting the debt over the next 10 years. And the president is honoring that bargain. House Democrats are honoring that bargain. Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats are honoring that bargain. It is only Kevin McCarthy who has walked away from it. And he's walking away from it because he has what I call a crocodile caucus, a, an appeaser Jonathan is someone who feeds a crocodile hoping it'll eat him last. And Speaker McCarthy is feeding his crocodile caucus, first the Constitution on January 6th, then the presidency with his impeachment inquiry, then Ukraine with his cut and run strategy. Uh, and the crocodile is still going to end up eating Speaker McCarthy, but he's the last person in Washington to get that joke. Yeah, and I think that's pretty clear. So let's talk about the border security mentioned by McCarthy, also Ukraine, as aforementioned, the Ukraine funding. Would you be willing to set those things aside, at least for now, for a bill that would just fund the government and revisit? Or do you think it all needs to be connected? Well, it's a false choice because we have the parameters of an agreement to fund the government, not just through a continuing resolution, but for the entirety of the next year. They negotiated agreement that would trim uh, non-defense discretionary spending that would modestly increase defense spending. And both parties came together in a compromise. It was not a bill that I think a lot of Democrats loved, uh, but in the tradition of Washington, put the needs of the country ahead of 100% um, of party aims and did the right thing. And Speaker McCarthy is walking away from it. All he has to do is go back to the agreement that was already agreed to. And lastly, we want to turn to I know a subject that you care deeply about, the blockade put in place by Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville of military promotions. He is now saying he's going to continue it, quote, forever. We saw the Senate get a few promotions through last week, but is there anything more that Democrats, specifically House Democrats, what can be done, or does this simply fall at the feet of Republicans to pressure Tuberville to stop? The responsibility for this lies squarely with Senator McConnell. It's clear that Senator Tuberville doesn't care about civil military relations or what's best for service members or what's best for the United States national security posture. Senator McConnell does claim to care about those things, and he now needs to act and put pressure on his uh, extremist colleague to cease this hold on, on nominations. As you mentioned, Jonathan, I'm on the Select Committee on Competition with China. I can tell you firsthand this is a gift to Xi Jinping. It is not only uh, eroding our ability to plan for Indo-Pacific scenarios regarding China, uh, it's also a public relations coup for him because it highlights 
dysfunction within Congress at a time when he's trying to claim to his people and to Indo-Pacific countries that the United States is going to be a fair-weather friend. Democratic Congressman Jake Auchincloss, a veteran. He represents the state of Massachusetts. We really appreciate you being with us this morning. We'll talk to you again soon.